After Viking King Magnus Bearlegs got struck down with an axe and fell dead on the battlefield, the clown of Norway fell into the hands of his son Sigurd I. Like his father, Sigurd was a Christian but stuck to his Viking roots when it came to his arsenal and fashion sense. When Sigurd was a child, his father had taken him on one of his expeditions which had them sailing to all sorts of places such as the Hebrides, the Isle of Man, and North Wales. Sigurd would observe his father swing his axe and cut through his enemies like butter. He saw his father burn the countryside, butcher men, and demand tribute from conquered lands, but even after all that bloodshed, his father would still pray and stay loyal to his faith as a Christian. Sigurd would do the same as king. Leaving Norway with his brothers, Sigurd sailed away from his kingdom to explore distant lands. Sigurd had his goal set to exploring Christian lands such as Constantinople and Jerusalem. After making an agreement for his brother Eystein to take care of Norway, Sigurd set sail with his expeditionary army to the Mediterranean. In 1107, the Norwegian Crusade had officially begun with Sigurd as the leader, also giving him the name Sigurd the Crusader. 10,000 men and 60 ships travelled with Sigurd, and with that army, Sigurd was ready to crusade. Sigurd's first stop was in England where, to show his gratitude and boost his reputation, donated a fair amount of money to various English churches. After spending some time in England, he sailed off south to the land of Galicia. This stay didn't last long however as the ruler, Alfonso VI, was busy elsewhere and his family had either been killed or absent, so the Norwegians had to rely on the common people and their earl. The earl agreed to let the Norwegians stay, but an argument for unknown reason happened between the earl and Sigurd. With no patience left, Sigurd plundered the earl's castle, resupplied, and set off, now more aggressive than before. As they were sailing across the sea, they encountered a Muslim pirate fleet which attacked them. The Norwegians were triumphant in this minor skirmish however, and abolished the pirates with ease. This was but a taste of their conflict with the Muslims. Sigurd and his army made their way to Portugal, which is under Muslim rule. They first pillaged the castle of Sintra, raided the loot, and killed anyone who refused to be baptised. Sigurd's next stop was Lisbon, where he made even more loot. First, he raided a castle south of Lisbon. Then, he raided an outpost in Formentera in the Balearic Islands. Formentera was occupied by African freebooters whose headquarters were located in a makeshift fortress located near a cave system in the cliffs. The freebooters, itching for a fight, taunted the Norwegians to prepare for battle. Agitated as he already was, Sigurd commanded his troops to find a path by which they could drag two small boats to the clifftop. Once done, the men piled on board and launches were lowered on strong ropes down to the clay mouths. The Norwegians then fired a hail of storms and arrows forcing the defenders to retreat from their outermost wall. Sigurd and a few of his men went up the cliff and encountered the rest of the defenders. They fought until the defenders were no more. Sigurd and his army looted this area as well. Sigurd's next raid was in Ibiza, then Sicily, where he was greeted by the 14-year-old ruler, Count Roger II, who was the son of the actual ruler, Adelaide. Sigurd and Roger became really close, talking about the Crusades and how crusading is impacting the lives of both Christians and Muslims. By 1110, Sigurd and his crusaders sailed from Syria to Palestine. The first fight the Norwegian crusaders tried to pick in Palestine were with the townsfolk of Ascalon, which were constantly under attack from other crusaders in previous years. Sigurd and his men approached Ascalon on foot, but to their shock, the townsfolk decided to stay in their houses and not to pick a fight with the Norwegians. Again, this may be because the previous attacks were done by other crusaders, so when Sigurd's men arrived, they finally decided not to do anything about it. After leaving Ascalon due to the lack of battle, Sigurd went on his way to Jaffa, where he met King Baldwin I, and together they went on to Jerusalem. Sigurd and Baldwin got along very well together and even became best friends, gifting each other with riches, wearing the fanciest jewellery, and talking about the luxury of being kings and crusaders. With the two kings having a great friendship, Baldwin asked Sigurd to assist him in a city that was resisting his rule, known as Sedan. The siege of Sedan lasted 47 days, beginning on October 19th, 1110. Sigurd had 60 ships at his command and enforced a blockade to make sure the enemy fleets did not try to escape. Meanwhile, Baldwin made preparations to storm the walls. The citizens tried to fight back the crusader forces by throwing rocks from their catapults and poorly made siege towers. But thanks to the Norwegian crusaders and their viking thirst for battle, the crusaders charged in without fear. Some of the tactics the defenders tried were to shoot crossbow bolts into the streets below, 
though this was useful to a certain extent as the crusaders were equipped in heavy armor. Others tried to borrow mines underneath the tower so they could flank the crusaders, but this plan also failed. Eventually, the rebels surrendered and handed the city over to King Baldwin. Those who left were permitted to go to Damascus, and those who stayed were paid a collective tribute that would reduce their chances of poverty. Sigurd and his men looted the city as usual, and was considered to be the biggest score Sigurd has ever done during his crusade. After years of raiding cities and foreign lands, Sigurd finally considered that his mission was accomplished and the Norwegian crusades officially ended in 1111. After departing his wife Magre, Sigurd made his final stop in Constantinople, where he would encounter Alexios Komnenos. Alexios Komnenos was hesitant at first as he settled down from crusading long ago and didn't want to deal with someone similar to Bohemond. Luckily for him, Sigurd was done with his own crusades and only requested to rest and recover. When it was finally time to go home, Sigurd traded some of his ships for horses with Alexios and even gifted him a gilded dragon to remember him by. Sigurd then travelled through Bulgaria, Hungary and the German states before finally reaching Norway where his people welcomed him back with open arms. Sigurd was only 21 years old when he was done crusading. Sigurd settled down as king of Norway for the rest of his years already satisfied with his achievements. He did go mad at times, possibly due to the post-traumatic stress disorder, but despite this, didn't completely lose himself and still managed to be a good king. In 1130, Sigurd of Norway passed away at 40 years old and ruled his kingdom for 27 years. The outcomes of Sigurd's crusading was much more impactful than it really was. Thanks to the paths and reputation Sigurd left behind, future crusaders would use these resources to create their own crusades. For example, in Sicily, thanks to the friendship of Sigurd and Roger II, crusaders would follow the path Sigurd left behind with the help of Roger II for guidance. These paths would also be used by the famous Richard the Lionheart during the Third Crusade. There are still debates on whether or not Sigurd is considered a crusader. He didn't take any crusading vows, nor did he answer any calls for help from other Christian lands. It is said that Sigurd, along with his warriors, only ventured out into the wild for loot and riches. Either way, Sigurd's crusades made a huge impact on the First Crusade. The only logical conclusion is that Sigurd felt a calling to him, to the crusades that were all about battle and warfare, and Sigurd simply wanted to be a part of that though. Whatever the case may be, Sigurd will be remembered as the Viking who crusaded across the world in hopes for loot and adventure. Thank you for watching and letting me share my love for history to you, and I'll see you on the next one.